Hi, my name is Steve and I'm with Free Tours by Foot Berlin and I'm standing in the center of the city blocks away from Potsdamer Platz and just behind me is a seemingly nondescript everyday parking lot but below the pavement roughly eight meters below the ground one of the 20th century's great dramas unfolded. It's the location or was the location of the Führer bunker where Adolf Hitler spent the final days of the Second World War and where he finally took his life. Now, before I get into the bunker, I'm going to take you on a short walking tour of what was once the old government quarter, where the Reich Chancellery used to be located, so you get an understanding of why the bunker, bunker was located here. Now, I will leave a link in the description to the companion post to this video, so you can follow along the walking tour route there, and also you find more information on some of the things that I'm talking about. This is a stop also on two of our walking tours here in Berlin, our Welcome to Berlin tour, as well as our third Reich store. I'll leave links to both tours also in the description. Let's get started. Now, I just came out of the Möhrenstrasse U-Bahn station. And as I mentioned in the opening, I was only uh, blocks away from Potsdamer Platz. So there's a couple different ways that you can go. Uh, this is the apartment complex where we started. Right? And we are on the intersection of Wilhelmstrasse and Vossstrasse. And we're standing next to this statue here. This is a statue of uh, First Leopold von Dessau. He's one of the several Prussian aristocratic generals who once stood around the perimeter of Wilhelmsplatz. And he stands exactly where he stood in the 19th century on the west side of the square. You can, it's marked with a red dot in the image in the screen that you see right now. now Wilhelmsplatz has always been an important square for Prussian aristocrats and government functions. But in the late 19th century, and Prussia became the head of the German Empire, there was a beautifully landscaped park that formed the central point of the government, a government sector. And I'm standing right now where you can see that red arrow. And today, what occupies the square are kind of you know, brutalist style buildings. You can see here this apartment building here. And then on this side, we have the embassy of the Czech Republic. Okay, we're heading along the outer perimeter of what was once Wilhelmsplatz. And directly in front of me, you can see a street and a silhouette of a face. I'll get into what the silhouette represents or who it represents. Right? But on the north, just outside the northwest corner of the park stood Palace Schollenberg. It was the Berlin mansion of a Polish Prussian nobleman. And Otto von Bismarck, the first prime minister in the German empire would choose it to become the home of the Reich Chancellery. During the Weimar Republic, a large southern annex was built and was located just across the street where that apartment complex stands today. That street that you see here, on der Colonnade, which we're going to walk down in a moment, did not exist. And the building, the new chancellery and its addition, or the old chancellery, I'm sorry, and its addition, was the temporary residence of President Hindenburg when he appointed Adolf Hitler as the new chancellor of Germany. And it was from one of the windows in this building that Hitler addressed the crowds on the day of his appointment. Upon Hindenburg's death, Hitler would occupy this building and it would become both his Berlin residence and offices. It was here in the gardens of the Chancellery that air raid shelters were constructed and where Hitler would spend the final months of World War II. But more on that to come. Now we're here on the northeast corner of what was once Wilhelmsplatz. And you can see there's some kind of, I guess, rather, I my opinion drab buildings but here there once was a building that would eventually be the ministry of propaganda and here's a picture of joseph goebbels okay now we're going to make our way across the street over here So this abstract artwork is a silhouette of Johann George Elsa, a German worker who attempted to assassinate Adolf Hitler and other high-ranking Nazi officials in 1938. Elsa, who had admitted to voting for the Communist Party in Germany, opposed Nazism, but particularly Hitler's brand of fascism. His plan was to assassinate Adolf Hitler, Goering, and Goebbels, hoping that the elimination of these three would provide the space for a more moderate Nazi party. 
1936, he took a job in an armaments factory where fuses and detonators were produced, and then later in a quarry where he had access to explosives in order to build a bomb. He would place this bomb at the Burger Braukeller in Munich, the same beer hall where Hitler launched his beer hall putsch. Hitler was scheduled to deliver a speech on the anniversary of the putsch. Elsa had worked for weeks in advance to install the bomb underneath the platform where Hitler would deliver his speech. Hitler moved the speech up 30 minutes so he could leave Munich early due to some poor weather forecasts. The bomb went off as scheduled, but only hangar bys were still in the beer hall at the time. Seven died and dozens were injured. Ironically, Hitler would view this escape as evidence that Providence, Providence intended for him to complete his goals. Now, going to head down to the bunker area. We are now walking along on der Colonnade, that street that did not exist prior to the war I mentioned previously. And in January 1938, Adolf Hitler officially commissioned Nazi state architect Albert Speer to construct a new Reich Chancellery adjacent to the old, referring to the latter as fit for a soap company CEO and not fit for the headquarters of a greater German Reich. And as you can see on the map, we are walking along the northeastern corner of the new Chancellery. This building was big. Here on the eastern edge, we would be walking along the edge of the 68 meter long Courtyard of Honor. It was the official entrance to the new Chancellery, and the entrance was flanked by two statues, one named Armed Forces and the other named the Party. The courtyard is marked number 13 on the image that you see on the screen now. The door flanked by the statues led you eventually to the Great Gallery, a 148 meter or 484 foot long marble-clad room, which was an impressive display of Nazi power and excess. According to Speer, Hitler was very pleased that his gallery was roughly twice as long as the Hall of Mirrors at Versailles. And Hitler's personal office was an astounding 400 square meters, it's 4,300 square feet. It too was clad in marble from floor to ceiling. Over 4,000 workers labored day and night to ensure that the construction of the building was finished in time for the official receptions at the start of January 1939. But all of these man hours and efforts ultimately went to waste as both Reich chancelleries were destroyed during the Battle of Berlin. It has been said that some of the marble salvaged from the ruins was reused for the Soviet war memorials in Kleptower Park, nearly eight kilometers southeast of here, and somewhere where you should definitely go and visit when you come to Berlin. We have now returned to the back side of the residential building to this unassuming parking lot that I was mentioning in the opening. And today, what is known as the Fuhrer Bunker was a pair of underground air raid shelters. The first was a temporary shelter built for Hitler and his staff in 1936 as part of a project that was called for the creation of a large reception hall in the old chancellery. Its roof was two meters below the ground. The second and a deeper bunker, roughly nine meters below the gardens, was built in 1944, and this is where Hitler and his staff relocated to during the Battle of Berlin. You can see on this placard here, um, you can see the view of the two bunkers. This is the first bunker. This was the one built in 1936, and this would eventually be where Goebbels and his family would come to. We walked around from Wilhelmstrasse we turned around into this corner here. This was the first one, this was the high one. And I'll put an image on the screen. You'll see this pointy top. This is where the guards to the Fuhrer bunker were stationed. And this was the, um, this was the exit. And you would enter, there was, I believe there was a few different entrances, but this was the first one. And then deeper into the ground, roughly eight meters below the ground. Um, this is where Hitler lived. It's, his rooms were here. Eva Braun had some rooms. They had the air filters. You have the emergency uh, telecommunication systems. And then there were some briefing rooms and the such. If you saw the movie Downfall, which depicts the drama that took place as Hitler comes to the re realization that the war is over and lost, um, this is where he eventually decides to commit suicide. He's gonna walk out here, somewhere around here, and he's gonna get shot or he shoots himself and then he has other orders and his will is to have himself burnt. Now, the Russians in 19, 
50s, roughly early 50s, tried to destroy the bunker, but they couldn't. And it wasn't until 1989 when these apartment buildings around here, you see these buildings here, when these were built that the, that the German, East German government was able to finally destroy it. Here are some images showing what it looked like. So some of the foundation walls and the such are still there, uh, but for all intents and purposes, it's gone. And the reason it took so long, um, this was part of no man's land. This is Potsdamer Platz, and this is where the outer wall was, and this is where the inner wall is. And we're roughly around here, somewhere around here. If you saw the movie Er ist wieder da, that's the German version. And the English version, at least the American version, I believe it's called uh, Look Who's Back. The opening scene of the, video, of the film, Adolf Hitler, at some kind of electrical current, shocks him back awake and he's lying on the ground here there's a few little boys playing soccer the ball kicks the ball they kick the ball and i believe it hits hitler in the head this is where so that's a satirical movie from i believe 2015. that's a pretty funny movie if you are into this kind of comedy right? and it's pretty impressive i mean it's crazy to think that all of this took place here and this became just a nondescript parking lot uh, but it kind of makes sense they didn't, the East German government and then the German government today did not want to have a location where neo-Nazis would come and honor Adolf Hitler. Uh, so they kept it quite plain. That placard that we saw over here earlier was put up um, not that long ago, maybe about 10 years ago. So for many, many years, you would come here and you could walk past this without having any knowledge of what took place here. Well, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this walking tour. Again, in the description below, I'll leave links to the companion post where you can again follow this route, as well as links to the two tours, our Welcome to Berlin tour and our Third Reich's tour, in case you come to visit and you'd like to have a guided walk. Let us know what you thought about the video below. If you'd like to see more walks like this, we plan to do many more plus travel tips to Berlin videos. Until then, thank you very much for watching. See you soon.